Hello and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be having a quick look at the problem of the integral of sec cubed x times by tan cubed x dx. Okay, so the first thing that you probably will notice about this, and you might be very tempted to, is you might be very tempted to rewrite this entire problem in terms of sine and cos. But if you end up doing that, that's going to take you down a bit more of a challenging pathway. It is possible, but much, much more difficult to approach it that way but there's a much nicer trick that we can use. And that trick is actually just based off of our very common identity that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to one. Okay, so what happens now if I divide everything here by cos squared x? Well, let's see what happens. So cos squared x, cos squared x. Well, then I end up with this new identity of tan squared x, since sine squared x over cos squared x is tan squared x, plus, well, cos squared x on cos squared x is 1, and then 1 over cos squared x, I can rewrite that as sec squared x. Okay, so what I can do with that now is I can now just use that to rewrite tan squared x as equal to sec squared x minus 1. Okay, so that's going to be very, very useful for us having a look at this problem right now. So, what can I do with that information then? Well, maybe I can try rewriting out our tan cubed x. I can take out the tan squared and replace that with a sec squared x minus 1. So, let's do that now. So, our problem now becomes the integral of, again, so sec cubed x. And now it's going to be multiplied by tan x, because we're only taking out the tan squared, which then becomes sec squared x minus 1 dx. Okay, so it is still looking rather difficult at the moment. So there's one very useful thing that we can now do, and that is to try and use a bit of a substitution technique. So we're going to go ahead and say let u equal to sec x. So it's a bit of trial and error with this particular sort of problem set. Now, after having some practice with similar problems, you'll identify that this is probably going to be the best option going forward. So let's think about why this is going to be helpful for us. So if u is equal to sec x, then well, that means I can rewrite this as u cubed, and then this part would become u squared, but that would still leave us with a tan x and still the dx term there. So that's not really too helpful there. But what we can do with this now is I can say, well, what is du dx? Okay, so the derivative of sec of x, well, I might rewrite that out now as d dx as 1 over cos x. And so hopefully you can see from this, we're actually going to need to use our quotient rule of differentiation. And just as a quick reminder, that is u prime v minus uv prime all over v squared. So u is the numerator, v is our denominator, and the primes just represent the derivatives, of course. So what is u prime? Well, if u is equal to 1, then u prime is going to then be equal to 0. So let's start writing out our derivative now. So that means it's going to be 0 times by v, which is cos, so still 0. Then minus, so u, which is 1, and then times by v prime. So the derivative of cos of x is going to be minus sine of x. So that will end up becoming a plus sine x over here and then all divided through by v squared, so that becomes cos squared x on the denominator there. Now, again, this doesn't look like it's going to be very useful for us, but let's quickly rewrite this all out as du dx equal to 0 plus sine x over cos squared x. So I'll get rid of that 0. Now, sine x over cos x, well, we know that's equal to tan x, and then we'd be left with a cos x in the denominator. So we can rewrite this as simply tan x sec x. Okay, so now if du dx equals tan x sec x, then what that means for us now, and let's quickly write that out so it's a bit more clear, is that I can say, therefore, dx must be equal to du over tan x sec x. Okay, so a lot of work has gone into us getting to this result here. So let's quickly go back and remind ourselves what we were working with just a moment ago. So we were working with the integral of sec cubed x tan x times by sec squared x minus 1 dx. 
So what we can do now is we can replace that dx with that term that we've just found now, du on tan x sec x. And so you see that will end up getting rid of that tan and one of the sec terms from here. So let's rewrite what our problem will look like now. So now it will look like the integral of sec squared x times by sec squared x minus 1 du. And let's quickly not forget that we had already set u equal to sec x right up here. So let's quickly write that in as well. So now our problem simply becomes u squared times by u squared minus 1 du. And compared to our original problem, that is ridiculously easy for us to now solve. So going through this rather routinely, we'll get u to the 5 over 5 minus u to the 3 over 3 and plus c, not forgetting our constant term, of course. Okay, now at our last step here, all we need to do is remember that u is equal to sec x, and now we'll just write that in instead. So our answer now becomes sec to the power of 5x on 5 minus sec to the power of 3x on 3, and then plus c, some constant term there. Okay, and that is our final answer. So if you have enjoyed today's video or if you found it useful, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment. I really do appreciate it. And as always, stay curious.